Good day everyone. For today's topic, we will be discussing about impregnation or otherwise known as infiltration. But before that, let's have a brief recap regarding the tissue processing steps. You must know that solid structures and tissues must be preserved and carefully processed in this following order. Once again, the first and most critical step in tissue processing is fixation. This is to preserve the fresh tissue ready for examination. While the secondary goal for fixation class is to harden and protect the tissue from the trauma of further handling so that it is easier to cut during gross examination. Next is grossing. Fresh tissue and body fluids must always be considered potentially infectious and grossing of specimen has the highest risk of all histological activities. Fake specimens have a much less risk because nearly all infectious agents are deactivated by histological fixation, although tissues must be thoroughly fixed for this to happen. Next is decalcification. This is the procedure whereby calcium is removed from the tissues. So mostly these are for bones and teeth. And you may use chemical agents either with acids, which forms soluble calcium salts, or with chelating agents that bind to calcium ions. After fixation, and if ever some needs decalcification, one must continue to the next process, which is dehydration. This step uses alcohols of various types that are generally used in increasing strengths to remove aqueous tissue fluids with little disruption to the tissue caused by diffusion currents. Once dehydration is completed, the next step is to do de-alcoholization or the removal of alcohol from the tissue so that it will be replaced with a substance that will dissolve the wax with which the tissue is to be impregnated or the medium on which the tissue is to be mounted. This substance gives the tissue a translucent appearance, hence the term clearing agent. Let's proceed now to the main topic, which is impregnation. Impregnation or infiltration is a process whereby the clearing agent is completely removed from the tissue and replaced by a medium that will completely fill all the tissue cavities, thereby giving a firm consistency to the specimen and allowing easier handling and cutting of suitably thin sections without any damage or distortion to the tissue and its cellular components. The volume of the infiltrating medium must not be less than 25 times the volume of the tissue. There are generally four types of tissue impregnation and embedding media, namely paraffin wax, celloidin, gelatin, and plastic. Paraffin is the simplest, most common, and best embedding medium used for routine tissue processing. After having been completely cleared, the tissue is submerged into two or more changes of melted paraffin wax, either in a paraffin oven or an incubator, which has been regulated at 55 to 60 degrees Celsius. Common waxes have melting points of 45 degrees Celsius, 52 degrees Celsius, 56 degrees Celsius, and 58 degrees Celsius. The 56 degrees Celsius wax is normally used for routine work. In a laboratory with temperature ranging from 20 to 24 degrees Celsius, paraffin wax with a melting point of 54 to 58 degrees Celsius is indicated. If the laboratory temperature is between 15 to 18 degrees Celsius, 
the melting point of wax to be used should be between 50 and 54 degrees Celsius. Remember that hard tissues require wax with a higher melting point than soft tissues. The advantages in using paraffin wax for impregnation is that thin individual serial sections, at least 10, which is the ideal, may be cut with ease from the majority of tissues without undue distortion. The process is very rapid, allowing sections to be prepared within 24 hours. Tissue blocks and unstained mounted sections may be stored in paraffin for an indefinite period of time after impregnation without considerable tissue destruction. Many staining procedures are permitted with good results. There are also few disadvantages in using paraffin wax for impregnation. Number one is overheated paraffin makes the best. Prolonged impregnation will cause excessive tissue shrinkage and hardening, making the cutting of sections difficult. Inadequate impregnation will promote retention of the clearing agent. Tissues become soft and shrunken, and tissue blocks crumble when sectioned and break up when floated out in a water bath. Tissues that are difficult to infiltrate, for example bones, teeth, brains and eyes, need long immersion for proper support. Otherwise, they will crumble on sectioning. Prolonged immersion in paraffin, on the other hand, is not advisable. Lastly, paraffin processing is not recommended for fatty tissues. The dehydrants and clearing agents used in the process dissolve and remove fat from the tissues. There are three ways by which paraffin wax impregnation and embedding of tissues may be performed. That is one, manual processing, automatic processing, and also by paraffin wax impregnation by manual processing is not really recommended because it has an increased time requirement. At least four changes of wax are required at 15-minute intervals in order to ensure complete removal of the clearing agent from the tissue. The specimen is then immersed in another fresh solution of melted paraffin for approximately three hours to ensure complete embedding or casting of tissue. Kindly disregard the picture below. So that's an autotechnicon that should not be for manual processing. In manual processing class, it is the manual way or technique of transferring one tissue receptacle to the other. So from one basket, going to another basket, another basket, each of these containers must be immersed in the paraffin wax for 15 minutes. So that is the meaning of at least four changes of wax per 15 minute intervals. The words on the screen that you can see, class, is an example of a time schedule for manual processing of tissues about three millimeters. Sorry class, I just really felt the need for that background music to be placed right there because, you know, it feels so boring looking at all words. So let's... We also have automatic processing for paraffin wax impregnation. This method makes use of an automatic tissue processing machine. What is this machine? Very good, an autotechnicon. So the Autotechnicon fixes, dehydrates, clears, and infiltrates tissues, thereby decreasing the time and labor needed during the processing of tissues, resulting in a more rapid diagnosis with less technicality. Usually, only two to three changes of wax are required to remove the clearing agent and properly impregnate the specimen. This is made possible due to Constant tissue agitation, which accelerates and improves tissue penetration, giving rise to more consistent results. 
One example of an automatic tissue processing machine is the Elliott Bench Type Processor. We also have Leica Brands and Tissue Tech. So those are some of the examples of an automatic tissue. The machine is mounted on rollers to permit the turning of platforms and easy access to beakers and wax baths. It makes use of 12 individual processing steps with 10 one liter capacity glass beakers and two thermostatically controlled wax baths with a safety device cutout switch to protect the wax against overheating. A transfer arm controlled by electrical current moves the tissues from one processing reagent to another by clock schedules. It can be removed by raising a spring-loaded plunger in the center of the cover plate, thereby allowing the tissue to be arranged manually anytime during the processing. Agitation of fluid is accompanied by a continuous vertical movement or rotation of the specimen carrier by a mechanism connected to the transfer arm. An electrical clock connected to a metal disc notched in positions of 15 minutes or more serves to control the time needed for each processing step. The clock rotates and sets the transfer arm and mechanism into motion, moving the tissue to the next position. A delay mechanism is provided in instances where processing time may exceed 24 hours. Above is a sample timetable for automatic processing of tissues ranging 3 to 5 millimeters thick. In this timetable class, you can see there that the fixative use is a 10% neutral buffered formalin. For the dehydrating agent, 70% alcohol and 3 changes of absolute alcohol. The different examples of clearing agents include xylene, toluene, benzene, and chloroform, and the impregnating medium used is a paraffin wax. Kindly check in this timetable the different types of clearing agents used and their effects in wax impregnation and the time needed for completion. Here are some of the precautions in using automatic processing for wax impregnation. The frequency with which fluids are changed depends on the number and sizes of the tissues processed. The presence of any odor in the clearing agent during final paraffin wax bath indicates that the paraffin wax should be changed. Dehydrating fluids should be changed frequently since dehydration is the most critical stage of tissue processing and inadequate dehydration is difficult to correct once the tissue is in paraffin. The first 100% ethanol bath should be discarded and the others moved down so that the final bath has fresh 100% ethanol after two complete processing runs of loads of at least three quarters capacity. The clearing agent and the dilute ethanols should be changed at least once a week. To avoid spillage, Fluid and wax containers must be filled to the appropriate level and correctly located in the machine. Wax accumulating on any surface or beaker leads must be removed and any spillage should be wiped away. Wax bath thermostats should be set at least 3 degrees above the melting point of the wax and timing should be checked when loading the machine especially if the machine is equipped with a delay mechanism. The last technique under paraffin wax impregnation is what we call vacuum embedding. Vacuum embedding involves the wax impregnation under negative atmospheric pressure inside an embedding oven to hasten removal of air bubbles and clearing agent from the tissue block thereby promoting a more rapid wax penetration. It helps speed up wax impregnation and removes any residual air bubbles, particularly in order. This technique is particularly recommended for urgent biopsies, 
for delicate tissues such as the lung, brain, connective tissues, decalcified bones, eyes, spleen, and central nervous system. The time required for complete impregnation is thereby reduced from 25 to 75 percent of the normal time required for tissue processing. The tissue is not overexposed to heat. Thus, brittleness, shrinkage, and hardening of tissues consequent to overheating is therefore prevented. The tissue can also be transferred after clearing to a heated bath of paraffin wax from which air can be The vacuum embedding oven consists of a flat bottom heavy brass chamber covered with a heavy glass lid resting on a wide and thick rubber valve which produces an airtight seal when the chamber is being used. The vacuum chamber is enclosed in a thermostatically controlled water jacket usually maintained at a temperature of 2 to 4 degrees Celsius above the melting point of the wax. There are two screw valves on the upper part of the chamber. One valve allows the readmission of air when the bath is under negative pressure, while the other valve is connected to a tube which is in turn connected to a suction pump to allow exhaustion of 400 to 500 millimeters inside as shown in the manometer. The degree of the vacuum should not exceed 500 millimeters mercury and a stopcock is provided to prevent water from being sucked back into the trap bottle and vacuum chamber when the water or suction pump is closed. After fixation and dehydration, the procedure in using a vacuum tissue embedding machine or a vacuum tissue processor is as follows. Number one, you have to clear the tissue in two changes of saline for one hour each. Next is you must place the tissue in molten wax and vacuum chamber and make the oven airtight. Exhaust the air slowly by means of a vacuum pump or venture suction pump until there is a negative pressure of 400 to 500 millimeters. Leave for 15 minutes. Then slowly readmit air until normal atmospheric pressure is reached. Place the tissue in fresh wax and then repeat steps 3 and 4. Placing the tissue again into another fresh wax and repeating steps 3 and 4 again but this time you have to leave it for 30 to 45 minutes. Bring to normal atmospheric pressure and then embed the A medical technologist should take note that the exhaustion and readmission of air must be gradual or the specimen may Well, to be completely honest with you class, I have never seen in real life a vacuum tissue processing machine nor have used this. So I can't really relate to you much more information on a person. But basing from the books that I have read and the videos that I have watched, vacuum embedding tissue processing machines can obtain the fastest results compared to the other two, the manual and the automatic processing. Since manual processing can take around three to five days, so that's a very long time. That automatic processing is around two to three days to complete the entire process well for vacuum embedding tissue processing class it can sum up until 18 hours so that's quite shorter compared to the other two what are the factors that can affect paraffin wax impregnation of the three methods of paraffin wax impregnation class vacuum impregnation gives the fastest result Total impregnation time, however, generally depends upon the nature and size of the tissues to be processed and the type of clearing agents to be used, as what you can remember from the timetable given in the automatic tissue processing. Different clearing agents tend to have different impregnation time. 
So that really depends on what clearing agent you are using. Larger and denser tissue blocks, like for example, the bones, fibroids, brains, they usually require longer periods and more frequent changes of wax. Benzene and silene are easily removed from the tissues, while chloroform and cedarwood oil are more difficult to remove and require more frequent wax changes. Addition of benzene may hasten displacement of cedarwood oil with less tissue shrinkage. What are the precautions that must be observed in paraffin wax impregnation? Since prolonged treatment in melted paraffin causes shrinkage and hardening of tissues, making cutting difficult, the tissue should not be left in this medium for longer periods of time than is necessary. Infiltration in overheated paraffin above 60 degrees Celsius will also produce shrinkage and hardening of tissues and destroy lymphoid tissues. To avoid this, the paraffin oven must be maintained at a temperature 2 to 5 degrees Celsius above the melting point of paraffin to be used for impregnation. This can also be reused two times. Paraffin wax must be pure, like free from dust, water droplets, and other foreign matter. Fresh wax should be filtered before use in a wax oven at a temperature 2 degrees Celsius. Wax that has been trimmed away from the impregnated tissue may be melted and filtered for future use with a coarse filter paper, like for example a greens number 904 filter paper, that type of filter. When wax has been reused, some amount of water inevitably is mixed with it. If excessive, this may impair the impregnating capacity of the medium and prevent formation of a good tissue block. Water must therefore be removed by heating the wax to 100 to 105 degrees Celsius, thereby As what I have said, Paraffin wax must be used only twice, after which, fresh. When using an automatic tissue processing machine, wax usually becomes admixed with the clearing agent, especially in the first wax bath, the first beaker, hence, water must be discarded. For fixed knife microtomes, a relatively hard wax with a higher melting point is recommended. Heavier microtome knives require harder paraffin wax than lighter ones. Let's proceed to the substitutes if paraffin wax is not available. First, we have paraplast. This is a mixture of highly purified paraffin and synthetic plastic polymers with a melting point of 56 to 57 degrees Celsius. It is more elastic and resilient than paraffin wax, thereby permitting large, dense tissue blocks such as bones and the brain to be cut easily with the same result as in double embedding. Blocks obtained are more uniform than with any other medium and with better ribboning of This is what ribboning of sections mean. This means the serial cutting of sections end-to-end -end without disrupting the momentum. Ideally, you can make a ribbon up to 10 sections. Serial sections may be cut with ease without cooling the tissue block, thereby preventing the formation. Because there are moments class during microtomy or section cutting, we use ice or a liquid soap to soften the paraffin wax in the tissue block here in the microtome in this video over here. So we also do that in real life. This technique helps in softening the paraffin wax during section cutting. And this also helps in creating very good ribbons. That's why we do this technique in the laboratory. But we usually use the 
ice blocks rather than using liquid soaps because we are afraid that this might cause tissue distortion when already mounted. When using Paraplast also class, no deposit is left on the slide after staining and no special processing schedule is required. It is soluble in common clearing agents and follows the same time schedule for paraffin impregnation and does not tend to crack like other paraffin wax substitutes. We also have Embedol under Paraplast. This is a synthetic wax substitute similar to Paraplast with a melting point of 56 to 58 degrees Celsius. It is less brittle and less compressible than Paraplast. Next is Bioloid. So this is a semi-synthetic wax recommended for embedding the eyes. So Bioloid for the eyes. And lastly, Tissue Mat. This is a product of paraffin which contains rubber with the same property as another paraffin wax substitute is an ester wax. This has a lower melting point at a range of 46 to 48 degrees Celsius, but it is hard. This one is not soluble in water, but is soluble in 95% ethyl alcohol and other clearing agents. Hence, it can be used for impregnation without prior clearing of the tissue. Cellusolve or the chemical name ethylene glycol monoethyl ether or silene may be used as clearing agents if indicated. In such instances, removal of the clearing agent must be gradual. That is, the tissue must be placed in a solution containing equal proportion of clearing agent and ester wax for 3 to 6 hours before finally transferring it to pure wax. Three to four changes of wax are required to ensure complete tissue impregnation. Sectioning of ester wax impregnated tissues should be done on a heavy-duty microtome, like for example a sliding or a sledge type microtome. So later on class you will be familiarized or introduced with the... But for now, let's just focus on the different types of um, impregnated media. Due to the relative hardness of the wax, there is an importance of using this heavy duty. Lastly, under substitutes for paraffin wax, we have water soluble waxes. These types of waxes are mostly polyethylene glycols with melting point of 38 to 42 degrees Celsius or 45 to 56 degrees Celsius. The most commonly used water-soluble wax is called a carbowax. This is a polyethylene glycol containing 18 or more carbon atoms, which appear it is soluble in and miscible with water, hence does not require dehydration and clearing of the tissue. The tissues are fixed, washed out, and transferred directly into the melted carbowax. Processing time is reduced with the special advantage that harmful effects produced by dehydrating agents are consequently avoided. It does not remove neutral fats and lipids, which are ordinarily soluble in reagents used for routine processing with paraffin, hence allowing these substances to be demonstrated in thin sections. Tissues are not exposed to too much heat so that excessive hardening, shrinkage, and brittleness of tissue is avoided. Making carbowax technique suitable for many enzyme histochemical studies. Cytologic details are excellently preserved as well using carb. For routine processing, four changes of carbowax one in each 70% and 90%, and two times in 100% concentration at a temperature of 56 degrees Celsius are used at 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and one hour with...
Specimens are then embedded in fresh carbo wax at 50 degrees Celsius and rapidly cooled in a refrigerator. Due to its hygroscopic nature, carbo wax is very easily dissolved in water. Care must be taken to avoid contact of the block with water or ice. Tissue sections are very difficult to float out and mount due to its extreme solubility in water, dehydrating, and clearing agents. Adding soap to water or using 10% polyethylene glycol 900 in water will reduce tissue distortion and promote flattening and flow. The video shown above class is what literally floating out of section really. Soon during mounting, you will be taught on how to properly mount the sections in the slide by catching them one by one in a water bath. So you catch them, you catch these sections in your slide. This procedure, floating out of sections and mounting it on the slides, probably is the easiest tissue processing step to do in the histopath lab, but the most difficult to practice. You would probably want to ask me, why miss? Why is that the most difficult? Because you have to make sure that your sections will be properly oriented in the Here is another form of medium that will completely fill all the tissue cavities, giving the tissue specimen a firm consistency. And it also allows easier handling and cutting of thin sections without further damage or distortion to the tissue and its cellular components within. That is through saloidin impregnation. Saloidin, or commercially known as collodion, is a purified form of nitrocellulose which is soluble in many solvents, suitable for specimens with large, hollow cavities which tend to collapse for hard and dense tissues such as bones and teeth and for large tissue sections of the whole embryo. It is supplied in thin solutions around 2% of cellulose dissolved in equal parts of ether and alcohol. It can also be supplied in medium solution that's four percent of cellulose dissolved in equal parts of ether and alcohol and also thick solutions that's eight percent of cellulose dissolved in equal parts of ether and alcohol. I really have a hard time looking for supplemental videos or pictures of celloidine impregnation since this is not really commonly used because it has a slower penetration compared to that of the paraffin wax so i don't have photos or videos that can supplement my advantages in using saloidin for impregnation is that it permits cutting of tissue sections which are thicker than in paraffin wax and is therefore recommended for processing of neurological tissues. Its rubbery consistency allows tissue blocks that are either very hard or of varying consistency to be cut without undue distortion. Dense tissues, which are hard to infiltrate, such as the bones, the brain, and specimens which tend to collapse easily due to air spaces like the eyes, are supported better if you use celloidin for impregnation. This can avoid the crumbling of tissues during sectioning. And when doing eye sections class, they are embedded by the paraffin method while the retina may be detached from the harder tissues like the sclera and the choroid that encircle the retina. The cedarwood oil used in the dry saloidin technique helps to soften the Another advantage is that it does not require heat during processing, 
hence producing minimum shrinkage and tissue distortion, especially for cutting large bone sections. It is therefore recommended in cases when minimum shrinkage is required and frozen section technique cannot be done. Here are some of the disadvantages in using celloidine for impregnation. Number one, it is very slow. It can last for several Very thin sections, less than 10 micra, are difficult to cut. And remember class, usual sections are around 4 to 6 micra. So it's very difficult to cut if you Cereal or ribboning of the sections are difficult to prepare. Vapor of the ether solvent is very inflammable, hence it should never be used near an open flame. Photomicrographs are difficult to obtain and this celloidine glass is very volatile and therefore must be kept in bottles with ground glass stoppers to prevent evaporation. Under this technique, there are actually two methods for celloidine impregnation of the tissue. That is the wet celloidine method and the dry celloidine method. Under the wet celloidine method, this is usually recommended for bones, teeth, large brain sections, and after the usual fixation and dehydration of the tissue, it is placed in equal parts of ether and alcohol for 12 to 24 hours. The tissue is then placed in thin celloidine around 2 to 4 percent for 5 to 7 days, transferred to medium celloidine that is around 4 to 6 percent for another 5 to 7 days, drained off and poured with thick celloidine that's around 8 to 12 percent until the specimen has become impregnated, usually between 3 to 5 days. Remember that using celloidine method or impregnation, it, it has a very slow pen. The specimen then is removed from the celloidine and transferred to an embedding medium containing freshly poured thick celloidine and kept in a tightly covered jar or desiccator in order to evaporate, the desiccator top is removed for a few seconds, time and again, to admit fresh air and harden the tissue block. Evaporation must be gradual to achieve a consistent, uniform degree of hardness throughout the block and prevent the formation of air bubbles. When the ball of the finger leaves no mark on the surface of the tissue block or your fingerprint, is no longer seen on the surface of the tissue block, evaporation and consequently embedding is considered to be complete. The tissue block is then stored in 70 to 80 percent alcohol until ready for cutting. This is done to avoid dehydration and shrinkage of tissues. Next is dry celloidine method. This is usually preferred for processing of whole eye sections and the principle and procedure of this method is similar to that of the wet celloidine method except that 70% alcohol is not used for storage before cutting. Instead, Gilson's mixture made up of equal parts of chloroform and cedarwood oil is added to the celloidine block before hardening to make the tissues transparent. The dry method does not make use of alcohol due to the presence of cedarwood oil in the block. The nitrocellulose method or the low viscosity nitrocellulose is another form of celloidine soluble in equal concentration of ether and alcohol, but with a lower viscosity, allowing it to be used in higher concentrations and still penetrate tissues rapidly. Because of this class, many workers prefer LVN to the ordinary celloidine for impregnation and embedding. 
it forms a harder tissue block and makes cutting of thinner sections possible. The tendency of tissues to crack may be prevented by adding plasticizers like oleum resini or castor oil when embedding chrome more dented. Low viscosity nitrocellulose is more explosive than celloidin and should therefore be handled with extra care. When dry, striking or dropping the container, this will cause the substance to explode. The same goes with picric acid, remember? It is usually marketed. The container must be kept tightly covered and protected from sunlight to avoid evaporation of alcohol. When no longer needed for future use, the nitrocellulose should be carefully destroyed since the material becomes increasingly dangerous as the alcohol continues to evaporate. So if paraffin wax and celloidin are not available for impregnation, we have this last option that is the gelatin impregnation. But this is rarely used except when dehydration is to be avoided and when tissues are to be subjected to histochemical and enzyme studies. It is used as an embedding medium for delicate specimens and frozen tissue sections because it prevents fragmentation of tough and friable tissues when frozen sections are cut. It is water-soluble and does not require dehydration and clearing, although fixatives such as 10% formalin class should still be washed out by running water whenever indicated. It has a low melting point and does not cause overhardening. After the fixative has been completely washed out, the tissue is placed in 10% gelatin with 1% phenol for 24 hours. You transfer it to 20% gelatin with 1% phenol for the next 12 hours, and finally to another fresh solution of 20% gelatin with 1% phenol, which is then allowed to cool in a refrigerator until impregnation and embedding are completed. Gelatin embedded tissues are then transferred to 10% formalin for 12 to 24 hours in order to harden the tissue. Tissues should not be more than 2 to 3 millimeters thick since gelatin embedded specimens are harder to freeze than non impregnated tissues. The 1% phenol serves to prevent the growth of molds. Excess gelatin may be removed by floating the sections onto paper and trimming them with scissors. The volume of the impregnating medium should be at least 25 times the volume of the t I think that's it for our impregnation lecture. Thank you so much for keeping up with me with this very long lecture. May you stay safe and God bless you. If you have questions, kindly comment down on a poll that I will be making in the Histopath group page in Facebook. See you soon!